you're smart, you're talented, you're motivated, but you still don't seem to be getting a PhD or a postdoc position. What is going on? Let's try and dig in a little bit today. Okay, so first thing I want to say is the job market is absolutely in shambles right now across fields, across careers. I don't know what the hell is going on. No one seems to be getting jobs. People have been applying for months and months and I don't know, there's like no positions, there's no funding, there's no money. I don't know if we're in some kind of crisis. So if you're not getting a position as easily, you are not alone. But just know that it is going to take a while and it's okay. So I think one thing a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the advertised positions you see online they don't actually exist and they're already taken they've been filled by an internal candidate i've seen it so many times in oxford and cambridge and lots of other universities in academia this happens so much so what i would recommend is you email the professor and actually ask them is this position likely to be filled by an internal candidate or should you go ahead and apply and you don't want to waste your time applying to positions that you just don't have a chance, you know? So this actually links to the second part, which is that a lot of times I've seen um, PhD applicants and also postdoc applicants, etc., not actually contacting the professor before applying and just sending an application straight away through LinkedIn or a portal or wherever it's advertised. So I would recommend against that because you want to kind of build some kind of rapport with the professor. You want to, you know, make some contact. And I've made a video on how to email professors and make that an initial contact but the reason for that is they're gonna know you they're gonna be a little bit more interested in you it just kind of conveys the 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 whole human side of you rather than just getting words on paper as an email application and it doesn't work all the time i was helping one candidate yesterday and it actually said please do not email um, applications we are not going to consider that so sometimes they're busy and they really don't want that but majority of the time it's a good practice if you actually contact them beforehand. Another very common mistake I see in a lot of candidates that I work with is that they don't tailor their application to the PhD or the postdoc that they're applying to. They will send a generic cover letter, a generic uh, research statement or personal statement. That's not going to work because they're going to see you've applied to like 20, 30 PhDs and you've not given enough thought to it. And they'll wonder why you even apply to them. Do you even understand? understand the project? Do you even know what they do? Do you understand about the lab? That's going to get them a little bit annoyed. Even if you're an amazing candidate, but you have to do your research. The other day, I had a one-to-one -one coaching session with another client who was applying for a researcher position at Oxford. And the whole statement was amazing. She fulfilled like all their criteria, but she had not talked about the actual project that was going to happen at Oxford. So they are not going to take you simply because you have the research experience. They want to know that your interest actually aligns with the project, that you've read about the project, you know what it is, you're keen to work on it. And most importantly, that you have your own ideas, your own hypothesis around it. And you know what you want to do in the next two to three years. You know, you're an independent researcher. And so that's really Really important for both PhD and uh, postdoc applications. And by the way, if you want to work one-to-one -one with me, figure out why you're being rejected and how we can improve your application, the link is in the description. Another thing I see in some candidates that I work with is that they have too much research experience. Now that might seem like a weird paradox, but the thing is, for example, I was working with this lady who had been working for eight years as a researcher and she's been like the manager of some lab right now. And so my question to her was, why are you choosing to do a PhD now? Because you're kind of overqualified. You know, you're already managing a lab. You're, you've got so much research experience. You're working sort of in, she was in the industry research. Why do you want to do a PhD at this time at this stage in your life and why this PhD and why this particular lab they want to know that you have a really strong reason because if they see that you're sort of overqualified and that you might just quit midway that's not going to look good on the professor or the university it's going to waste time their time their money so they want to know that you're actually committed to doing a PhD and why so for example I then really probed her and helped her 
uh, brainstorm why she really wanted to do a PhD and the reason was that with her job she didn't have as much say on what kind of research she could do, how long the projects were, how deeply she could delve into the scientific question. So for her doing a PhD was a lot about the scientific quest and the intellectual quest basically. And so I said, okay, you know, we need to put that in the personal statement. Otherwise, they're going to see you have so much experience. Why would they ask you to do a PhD where you already got PhD level research experience? In a nutshell, you have to have a very clear reason on why you want to do the PhD. Another time, so this was a candidate I spoke to recently, and I asked her, okay, why do you want to go to this institution? And she basically wanted to get out of her country, and she said, oh, you know, the honest answer actually is that I want to be away from here. And I'm like, okay, but can we reframe that in a more convincing way? Like, you have to have more reasons. And so I helped her brainstorm as well. We concluded that she wanted to learn in that institution because it was a world-leading institution and it would give her more opportunities than her country back home. And I said, you know what, we can put that in the personal statement. And we should, and we absolutely must. Okay, this is an example from my interview. So I had applied to the Institute of Cancer Research in London while I was applying for all my PhDs and everything. And I know why I got rejected. So in the interview, like, first of all, I had no interest in that project. I did not read up on it. I did not come up with my own hypotheses. I did not have any questions to ask the professor. So I remember on the interview days when all the applicants were sitting, having lunch together, I saw my professor there. This one student went up to him and started having this conversation about the project and what to do, blah, blah, blah. He was building a rapport with him there while I was sitting having lunch enjoying my sandwiches and making people laugh um, at the table and having a good time but I was just like I don't actually I actually don't care about the project as much and I didn't want to be there I had just applied there because I was so desperate to get some kind of PhD or get into a program but I wasn't interested in the project and in the interview in my actual interview with the professor then he told me you know what it's not actually about the smartest candidate it's about who is most keen about the project and I I knew then that he, that was like a subtle way of saying, girl, I saw you having sandwiches <laughs> and you're not interested in the project. And because in the interview, I wasn't talking about the project. I wasn't saying, OK, so how are we going to do this experiment? OK, how are we going to test this bit? I was saying things like, um, yeah, I could do that. OK, so. I had actually approached that interview with the mindset that, yeah, I'll do whatever you ask me to do or I'll do whatever this project is about, you know, and they could see that it wasn't really about the project for me. And that's why it, I got rejected. And I, I, I totally understand why. I'm glad I did because I did not care about that project, you know, whereas when I had the interview with my Oxford professor, I was so keen. I was like, oh, you know, have you tried this? Have you done it this way? What about that? Oh, I read some research about like this, but this seems a little bit like conflicting to what the dogma is in the field. Uh, what are your interests? And I wanted to pick their brains and I was so interested in the actual conversation with my professor and he could see that. And that's why he took me in, you know. One more thing is that um, this other candidate that I was working with, they asked her, so this was a PhD interview for Oxford, and they asked her, have you read this research paper from your professor um, from last year? And she hadn't because it wasn't related to the project that she was applying to. And so she was too hyper-focused on her project. But you got to know what your professor is doing, what the lab in general is doing, and because you're going to be working working with them, you'll be bouncing off ideas. So you want to have a holistic view of what the lab does and how your research fits in there. This was possibly one of the reasons why they didn't take her on. And in academia, you don't want to do that. You want to know what's going on around you in the field, uh, in the department, in your group, in other groups, sort of, you know, what's going on. Just talk your professors really well before you go into the interview. So you have a better, you know, so you can have a better scientific conversation with them and they're going to be more likely to, to take you on because they'll again they'll see your interest um another time um i saw this candidate who was trying to switch fields a little bit so he was trying to move from genetics and microbiology to human genetics and cancer research so 
I mean, it's, it's similar in terms of genetics and the tools that he was using, but it's still a bit of a jump to go from one field to another for your PhD. He hadn't put in why he wants to make this jump or how he's ready to make the jump. He knows the tools, he's been reading around, he's taken extra courses, he understands cancer biology, why is he interested in cancer biology? So all of that stuff was kind of missing in his personal statement and I think that would be one reason that would have been rejected. And so if you are switching fields, make sure to convince them of that you are ready, okay, that you can do this. They don't want to have to teach you everything from scratch. You should have the foundational knowledge. You should know kind of as much as a master's level program in that particular field. So if you don't have that knowledge base, do build it up, do read around, do read papers, research, all those things, and convey that in your personal statement and in your interview, how you have built that knowledge base and how you are ready to take on research in a completely different field from yours. Okay, so I have a checklist before you apply next time. This is what you should do before and just like, check off the boxes if you've done these things okay if you know why do you really want this position like why do you want a phd or a postdoc how does it like tie in with your career goals and things like that or research interests motivations experience all that stuff um are you interested in the project and the topic and how are you going to convey that are you interested in the field and do you have original ideas about this topic in this area the research gap do you understand the research gap um have you read around the topic have you read your professor's latest research have you read the latest research in the field have you thought about the project and do you have questions to ask them and hypotheses to test and do you have original ideas? From this checklist, I've created a free worksheet where it's going to help you brainstorm these questions and it, it's going to ask you to write statements of how are you going to convey this in your personal statement or in your interview. Write those statements down and then add them to your personal statement. So if you want that worksheet, check the link in the description and you can and um, I'll send it to you in your email, okay?